one video meet and greet with Daniel right after this panel. So make sure your top supporter information is updated with your current email address. To find that, scroll down. You'll see where it says top supporter rewards. Scroll to the link that says complete your top supporter information. The winner is going to be determined as soon as we announce the tipping is done, and tips made after that announcement will not be counted. If you'd like to tip, click the green tip button on the bottom left-hand corner of your Stage It screen. All right, next up today is someone who's known for portraying Dr. Joel in Saving Hope, Mark in Virgin River, and of course, he's known to us as the one and only Elijah Michelson from The Vampire Diaries and The Originals. Please welcome Daniel Gillies. Hi, everyone. Oh, boy. So this is my first one of these, and um, thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm incredibly gratified. I don't entirely know what to do, except read my, my questions on the right here. I do miss you all. I wish I could see you all in person and, and uh, give you larger than usual hugs. Um, oh, my, oh my goodness, it's blown up on the right hand side there. Okay, we've got a lot of questions. Um, okay, I'll just dive right into it. I'm, I'm going to uh, address some of these questions. Um, uh, Kellyanne87 says, um, Hey, Daniel, I'm Kelly. Would you consider reading a book for Audible and Elijah's accent? Yeah, I definitely would. I, I, I've actually just recently started in uh, my voiceover work. I did Thor for Marvel last year, and I'm, do and I, um, I'm actually doing a Japanese animation thing right now, um, which is really, really fun. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm totally enjoying it. I'm, I feel very blessed to be able to do that work, especially during COVID, you know when uh, a lot of our filming has been canceled. Uh, I'm trying to think of the perfect book to read in Elijah's accent. Um, trying to think of something incredibly feminine. Should be funny. I don't know. I'm looking at my bookshelf here. I don't know, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment seems apt. Um, thank you for the question, Kelly. Oriella asks, what old person things do you do? Oriella, all I do these days is old person things. I mean, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been called a boomer online, which is factually inaccurate, by the way. My parents were boomers, so I find that um, incredibly offensive. Um, but, uh, yeah, old person things. I mean, that's that's my life right now. I look after a five- and a seven-year-old. Oh, goodness me, I got a little hook there, don't I? Whatever. It's just... That's going to be persistent. Um, yeah, uh, old people things. That's that's all I do. I run around after a five and a seven year old, and I'm doing homeschooling. And I'm, uh, I, I mean, I guess that's not an old person thing. That's a that's a slightly grown up person thing to do. I consider it an old person thing to do. I have single friends who say to me, you know, um, God, you know, it's just it's the worst. It's terrible. You know, I, I don't know what to do, and I'm, I'm like. All I can think is, Jesus, I'm so jealous of the time you have. Um, but I guess the grass is greener, right? Um, I'm trying to think really specifically of an old person thing I do. Oh, you know what? I whistle. I whistle like an old man. There you go. That's an old That's an old person. I, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I always seem to imagine curmudgeonly old men whistling. So uh, that's something old I do, I guess. Anyway. Um Daniel, what's the first? Oh, this is from uh, Car Cardlin29. She says, Daniel, what's the first thing you're going to do after COVID-19? Um, I just want to travel again. I want to see you guys. You know, I, I, I want to um, be able to safely get on a plane and, and go to somewhere fun, you know? Um, uh, I have, I think it's, it's either L Blatch or I Blatch. I don't know. I don't know how to say that name. If you could have dinner with one person dead or alive, who would it be? Um, probably uh, Joseph Morgan so that I could murder him. Then he'd be dead. Uh, Sabrin, Sab, uh, Sabrin Aruella. Sabrin Aruella. Um, what do you like about the Michelson brothers relationship? Um, you know, I, it's not something I think about terribly much. What do I like about it? Um, goodness, what do I like about the relationship? I thought it was kind of a toxic relationship, actually. Um, oh, 
whole lot of forgiveness on the part of Elijah um, for his brother constantly betraying him. Um, I'm not sure I like that relationship, actually. It's not one that I would desire with my brother. Anyway, uh, Oriella, what quotes do, do you use on a regular basis? What movie quotes? I don't use movie quotes on a regular basis. I don't. I like quotes uh, from people who are um, mostly not in the movies. Um, I heard a beautiful one the other day by Elizabeth King. Um, she's an American sculptor. She says, uh, process saves us from the poverty of our intentions. That's process saves us from the poverty of our intentions. I like that one. Um, um, this one is from uh, Cosette Renab. Um, hi, my name is Cosette. Uh, how was your transition from playing a character like Elijah for so long to a more realistic show like Virgin River? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, it, th there was no transition. It's just like I, I, I understand the question, but frankly, um, playing Elijah was was something that I just uh, th that I did. It wasn't something that kind of lived with me. I did. I wasn't. You know, I wasn't walking around like Elijah or, or think it, it wasn't like something I had to shed. It's more difficult to shed roles that are truly emotionally demanding, like uh, movies and stuff, like the movie I just did in New Zealand last year, Coming Home in the Dark. Um, that, that, that stuff's tougher to get rid of as a person. It's more that you, uh, as a person, you have to sort of shed certain idiosyncrasies and characteristics, but, and also that you're, um, it was just so emotionally uh, demanding, but Elijah was like a costume for me. Um, Persia Maria, um, actually it's, it's Persa Maria. Uh, hi, I'm Persa. What do you think Elijah would do in a global pandemic? I don't know. Wouldn't it be like Christmas for him? It'd be amazing. It'd be like, it'd be, it's a smorgasbord. I mean, I don't mean to belittle um, the, uh, the, 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 the horror and, and, the, and the sorrow of this, but there are a lot of bodies and I imagine it's, it's probably, I hate to say it, but it's probably an amazing time for him. I, I know that sounds so politically incorrect, but um, SXC Gillies, what was your favorite part of Saving Hope? Oh, I loved Saving Hope. I, I thought it was a good show actually. Um, I loved, particularly the first season was, was very good. Um, um, I, you know, I worked with a, a director there by the name of David Wellington. Um, he drove me crazy some days, but I learned so much from him and I, and he, he was one of my favorite parts, but also the, that cast was just so amazing. And they were all so talented and such pros, you know, I love that cast. I love the, I love the, uh, I love that cast, our directors and the crew. Chrissy T, is there a role you auditioned for that uh, for that you really wanted but didn't get? Oh yeah, that's um, that's part of being an actor, uh, you know. And it's um, the the problem with our jobs is it's not a meritocracy, so it's not really about. Am I boring you guys? I'm probably boring you guys. Right? Um, is it, uh, you know. It's not about being the best. It's sometimes why I envy people in athletics. It's why I watch so much UFC stuff, you know, um, and I, I, I admire the fact that there's, there's, you know, definitive and distinctive winners and losers, you know, or, or ostensibly so, right? So I, I, like, I like the idea of, um, I, don't, I don't mean, mean to create competition out of art by saying that about um, acting, but our business is so about getting, you, you know, if you, if you happen to land a role in something that's large and, and creates a lot of waves, then that generates a whole lot more work. You know, it's not, we're, we're so often up against it. It doesn't matter how well you audition or how good you are or how much better you are than the person necessarily that, that got the role. It's, it's, it's not, it's not exactly a just system, but even then too, like sometimes it is a just system. Um, it, it rarely is, but, uh, but sometimes it is. <laughs> and, and, it, um, 
And yeah, there's been many roles I didn't get that I really wanted to do. I, I did, I, I auditioned, I think it was the last, maybe no, it was earlier this year, I think. Um, uh, Amazon's doing a thing with Lord of the Rings and there was a role in there that I really wanted and uh, haven't heard back. So, so that's one that flew the coop. Um, Emily Swinnell, what are you most excited about in Operation Rainfall? Well, Emily, I'm, ex I'm most excited about just seeing the film. Um, the film, uh, I'm impressed by what Luke Spark is the name of the, the director and the creator, and it's a beautiful um, piece of work. I mean, he, he, he made that for very little money, you know, and um, I think he made it look like a $80 million film. I really do. And so I'm just excited to see the movie itself. Um, I, I was... I was a little nervous going into it, knowing that he was doing it on a lower budget, but I'd seen what he'd done with his former movie. And I saw that he was able to sort of squeeze blood from that stone. He's an amazingly resourceful and talented guy. And my God, he's got big brass balls. That's right. I said balls, everyone get over it. All right. Uh, Kirsten, what is your favorite Christmas movie or tradition? Um, my favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. My favorite Christmas tradition. Well, now it's just like being with the kids, you know, like I, I just love how excited they get. I kind of almost like Christmas Eve more now because of how, just how giddy they get, you know, even though we're, we're not a Christian family, but like most people in the West, we celebrate Christmas, you know, um, but um, yeah, that's probably my favorite. My favorite part of it is, is just watching the kids get delirious, and then trying to control them after they've had too much sugar the next morning. Um, what famous person do you fanboy geek out for? If you were to meet Keely Gray, asks this question. What famous person do you fanboy out for? Um, man, I, so. I was, this, this is going to sound so pretentious and self-aggrandizing, but f for whatever reason, a slob like me ended up at a, um, a party several years ago. <clears throat> um, it was a birthday party for Salman Rushdie, the writer. Um, again, I don't know how I was there. Um, I, I do know I, I, a friend of mine was, was a dear friend of his. So it was just, uh, it was just luck. Um, and I, um, and there was a lot of, uh, fabulous people at this party, but, um, at one point I staggered backwards cause I was, uh, I guess I was having a beer or something. I wasn't, I wasn't already drunk. So don't call me a lightweight. I know what you're thinking. You think I'm a lightweight. It's not true. Get the fuck out of here with that. That's no, sorry. I won't do that today. I, um, I staggered back to, maybe to give somebody some room. I can't remember what I was doing. Anyway, I elbowed some gentleman right behind me. He was kind of slight, frail, and uh, I felt as as soon as I elbowed him that I got him right in the solar plexus. I turned to apologize and say, hey man, so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I turned around and it was um, it was Lou Reed. So I elbowed Lou Reed in the solar plexus. He didn't look happy about it either. Um, and I, so it was a, it was a, it was a real uh, cauldron of emotions at that point in time, because I was meeting a god of mine were and so I was fanboying, but at the same time, I was really, really deeply, deeply humiliated. Anyway, um, give me a second. I'm just gonna do a little switcheroo thing here. Check the to Oh my god, there's lots of you there. Um, goodness me, lots of activity. Um, it's Marina. Hi. Um, it's Marina says, hi, what's your favorite thing about working with Joseph? Uh, when they would call cut and it was his time to, you know, when, when it was time to leave the set, go in a different directions. That was my favorite time. Books, right. Brooke, Brooks, Brooks, right. That's tricky. Hi, Daniel. Who did you like portraying more Joel or Elijah? Um, I couldn't really compare them. It's sort of, you know, it's like, chocolate and vanilla or apples and oranges. I, I, they're, 
I, I enjoyed both those sets. I was very spoiled in that I had am amazing, amazing um, people around me in both of those jobs. And I laughed a considerable amount on both sets. Um, Marcella. Marcella says, hi, I'm Marcella. What's your favorite line from Elijah? And what's the funniest thing you remember while on the set of TV? Um, my favorite line of Elijah's, I don't remember. I, I don't, I don't watch the show. Um, I haven't watched, apart from the episodes I directed, I haven't seen from season, beginning of season three, I think on. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not too, and also to my brain just dispenses with lines that, um, Elijah says, um, I don't know. I can't remember many lines of Elijah's. I can't remember any. I remember Gentlemen, Shall We? I remember that. Because I was about to do a huge action scene, so I, that, that line went into my head. Um, what else? Oh, Julie Pl Plett wrote a beautiful line one time um, for uh, the Vampire Diaries. I'm pretty sure it was Julie. And I think she wrote... Um, mother didn't make us monsters. We did that to ourselves. I think I'm talking to Rebecca. I like that line. Um, the funniest thing I remember while on the set of TVD, um, all of it, the whole thing was funny. The whole thing was, a, it was a very, 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 very funny experience. Well, on, on TVD, you know what? P Paul Wesley's a very, very funny man. He's a very, very amusing human. And we, I think we share a bit of a, a similar sensibility. He's, he's mischievous, Paul. And I like anybody who's got a little bit of a laugh in their eyes. And Paul has very large laugh behind those eyes at all times. And he's aware of how um, silly life can be sometimes. And I like that about Paul. He's a, he's a wonderfully funny human. Um, uh, I am not even a triumph. It's, it's Xersa. CO3, I don't know, X-R-Y-S-A, CO3. Hi, Daniel. Oh, here we go. I'm Chrissa from Greece. Uh, which is your favorite book and why? Man, that's a great question. What's my favorite book? I mean, Catch-22, it made me laugh more than just about any other book ever. I don't remember. I mean, howling with laughter. I have just finished reading... Um, Dune by Frank Herbert. It was pretty amazing uh, in terms of its vision, but it, I certainly wouldn't call it my favorite book. Um, uh, yeah, those two, I would say Catch-22 or, um, and I read, I read Kerouac's On the Road recently, which is kind of stunning and bright and beautiful. And I should have read it many years ago, obviously. Um, Abby Spur says, would you consider a UFC Yourself, Daniel. No, I'm 44. Are you kidding me? First of all, these fighters, the good ones, the really good ones, retire at like 33. You know, um, I do wish I'd, I do wish I'd found martial arts um, or Muay Thai, and um, and I would have done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with it had I been young enough. You know, when my body was younger, I wish I'd, I wish I'd started younger. Um, because I would have, I, I certainly wouldn't have even competed then. I think you have to have a real, real desire to do that stuff. But I wish I'd, I wish I'd started younger because I would have loved to have had a good few more years of um, hitting the pads. Um, the Great British Moose. What a wonderful name. Um, Great British Moose. Evening from England. Um, I'm Mo. I hope you're well. Do you have any advice for aspiring actors and actresses? Yeah, don't wait. Don't wait. If you think you've got something you want to say and you think you can say it, say it. Don't ever wait for the phone. Don't wait for the right agent. Go and put on plays with your friends. You have phones right now that are better camera. I shot my movie. Uh, you know, I directed a movie, you know, 10 years ago. Your phones are just about as good as the, the, um, the uh, cameras I was shooting my movie on 10 years ago. You guys can make your own stuff. Make your own stuff. Create it. You even have platforms you can stream your stuff on. Just go and make, if you think, if you're an actor, decide and call yourself an actor today. Go and make your own work. Produce it. 
make it, cut it and send it out there. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Just worry about getting experience. Don't worry about it all, actually. Just just go, go and get experience. And do theatre, for God's sakes. I'm noticing a lot of a lot of actors emerging now who are aspiring actors and actresses who have no interest in theatre. I'm like, you're never going to be very good. Um, because it's like the military for actors. It's just, you, I, I can tell... I can see in an actor when they've, when they've trained that way. Um, Maggie Mills. Hi, Daniel. I'm Maggie. What's your favorite episode of Virgin River to make and why? Honestly, Maggie, I can't tell. Um, they, they do what's called block shooting with me. So when I go to Canada, I, um, I often shoot five or six, you know, uh, scenes in a row, you know, and they'll be from all different episodes. So I couldn't tell you what episode, I couldn't tell you what my favorite episode was because I can't, I, I don't know which um, things I've filmed belong in which episodes. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't watched any of season two and I haven't watched half of season one. I'm sure the show is very good. I watched uh, I watched a couple of the episodes, but I, I couldn't tell you which episode is my favorite. I love um, Alex Breckenridge and I, I, go, I do most of my stuff with her. And of course, Martin Henderson is dreamy and talented. Don't tell him I said that. He's another Kiwi. Don't tell him. Um, Tanya, 17. Daniel, greetings from Russia. What languages do you know? Oh, I can speak like a handful of words from several countries, but, um, but yeah, I, I, it's really Spanish and English are the other two. Um, Sangeeta asks, hey, I'm Sangeeta from India. Besides acting, what else do you like to do? Um, well, I like to watch UFC. Um, I paint, um, not nearly frequently enough. Um, I write most days and actually in COVID, believe it or not, I started, um, at 44, I started working out every day. Um, uh, so I, I just decided, um, I was not looking, I was looking a little portly, shall we say, don't tell Joseph Morgan I said that, but I was looking a little, a little round, actually round was something that. Um, Charles Michael Davis called me, described me as looking a little round after one of our decadent um, trips through Europe together. And he wasn't wrong when I looked back at those photographs. I couldn't see it at the time. But um, now, I'm, now I'm working out pretty much every day. I don't like, it says, say, do you, what do you like to do? I don't like to work out, but I now do it every day. Also, too, it helps with anxiety. I used to, I, I get bouts of anxiety. With, when I work out, I it completely, um, removes any and all anxiety. Uh, Ariana Miller says, hi, were you okay with the way the originals ended? Sure. It wasn't Ariana. It wasn't my call. It's fine. It was going to end. However, it was going to end. It wasn't my call. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't attached in that way. I truly, I just wanted to see my children again, which I hadn't for several years, you know? Um, and, uh, I just, I just wanted to be with my family. Um, Abba Park asks me, Hey Daniel, when is part two of 50 shades of gray coming out? Good God. I almost wish I hadn't read that question. Um, not that it isn't a good one. It's just that, um, Abba, I feel guilty because, um, I had episode two all lined up and ready to shoot. And then, um, a gentleman by the name of George Floyd was murdered senselessly and, uh, horrifically, you know, in the United States. And so I, I just felt like it was in poor taste for me to, to shoot that then. And so I decided to leave it a couple of months and I left it a couple of months and now it's, a, you know, more time has raced by, but the, the engine was burning hot, like before, um, before the whole BLM, before the whole BLM movement. At any rate, um, uh, William nine seven seven one said, "Is it true? True, you was meant to be in Spider Man three. Well, um, no, I was not meant to be in Spider Man th three. Um, I did sign a deal with them to be in Spider Man three, but it was sort of conditional on what on where they took the story, and uh, so I had already signed a deal for three if they wanted to take the story in a certain direction, but they didn't go in that direction. They went." 
they were talking about bringing Wolfman in as a um, potential adversary for a Spider-Man, and they didn't go. They decided they, that Wolfman wasn't the way they wanted to go. Um, Jordana Manda, ninety-one. Daniel, do you prefer directing or acting? That's a great question, um, Jordana. Um, you know, it's a question I ask myself every day. I I know I'm a better actor than director because I've had much more experience as an actor. But directing is where you actually, like, if I'm directing my own material, I prefer directing. If I'm directing somebody else's stuff, it's still incredibly fun and incredibly fulfilling. I just, um, it's, it's not nearly as um, fulfilling as, as my own work, you know, work for myself. Because um, then you get to say what you would like to say to the world. Uh, how are you guys doing anyway? I just want to check in with you because I've been talking a lot. Oh my goodness. You are rampant in there. There is a lot of stuff. Goodness me. Brittany, how many people are there? Oh, she probably can't hear me or she can, but I, she probably can't talk. Um, uh, Neve Pence. Would you, would you, it's an unfortunate last name, I'll say. I'm kidding, but he is not a great person. He hasn't, he soiled that name. Would you rather have a 100 kittens or three sloths? P.S. I love you. Uh, um, okay, I don't, I don't know if loving me includes asking me about sloths, but uh, 100 kittens or three sloths? I don't know. Are, are sloths supposed to be a big problem? Because I, I'll tell you, I wouldn't want one kitten right now. I, I, my, my, I have two cats here in the, um, in the house and they are, um, they're, it's a disaster. Um, they are elderly cats, shall we say. And one of them pees on everything. I've washed my entire bed linen, um, duvet, duvet cover, you know, um, blanket pillowcases. I've washed everything, all my bed linens, uh, four times in three days. Because my cat has now decided that my bed is her fucking toilet. That's right. I said fucking. It's a dire situation. Leave me alone. Cat litter in their little feet. I don't. They destroy all the furniture. Give me three sloths. Three sloths. I'll build them a cage outside. I'll do something. Three sloths for sure. Summer D. Freitag says, if Haley and Elijah never died, do you think they would have had a chance together? Nah. Nah. Oh, come on, your brother knocked her up. It was never, it was pretty doomed from the outset. Um, although I do love Phoebe Tonkin very much. Not a show. Um, Amanda Fade, do you take any of Elijah's suits home? Yeah, I did. I, I, I took um, several of them because it was fitted to me. And um, I'll shamelessly say that. I'm probably going to get a knock at the door for saying this online, but I took him. What are you going to do about it? Come get me. Come take them out of my cold, dead hands. Um, and it says, uh, Suana, Joseph fan. Okay, well, I'm going to answer this question with contempt. Daniel, can you cook? Favorite go-to comfort food, love from India. God, I love India. I need to go back. It's been too long. Um, Suhana, um, yes. Um, no, I'm saying it wrong. Suhani. Suhani. I'm sorry. Suhani. Yeah, I, I have to learn how to cook because I'm looking after two little people. So actually my kids made me a much, much better cook. Um, go-to comfort food, bowl of cereal. I love cereal. If I'm, if I'm, I'm watching everything these days because I'm working out so hard. So I can't, like I haven't even eaten today and it's 1044. I won't eat till like one or two o'clock because I'm doing that intermittent fasting thing. But, um, I miss, I mean, I, I, I don't think a day goes by where I don't eat some chocolate. I always eat even a little dark square dark chocolate and I, and, uh, cereal. Give me a bowl of cereal. I love it. Um, well, that's good, Brittany. That's that's almost better than um, it's almost better than some of our auditoriums. Uh, Emily Swinell, I don't know Swinell, whatever. Uh, yeah, not not whatever. Emily's, I think Swinell. Hey, Daniel, I'm Emily. 
I got that part. I need you to, uh, to know, do you like Star Wars? And if you do, what character would you want to play? Emily, I think Star Wars is amazing. Uh, the universe that George Lucas created. I think that every film thus, that's happened since then has been a disaster. Um, I, I like elements of Rogue One. The new Star Wars, like uh, George Lucas's second trilogy was all terrible. I didn't even really like the second half of Jedi or, or the Ewok stuff. I like the first two movies. I think Empire Strikes Back is one of the great movie, great movies of last century. Like one of the great, uh, and Star Wars too. Star Wars and Empire were two of the great, great sci-fi movies like of all time. But nothing's been good since. They've all been, they've been terrible. Um, you cannot replace mastery, mystery, I should say, with trickery. And that's what they've done. It's just all trickery and guest star. So it's a, I, f I felt nothing. I actually just, funny you should ask that, I just watched The, the Last Skywalker the other night because I thought, oh, I'll check this out. I, I never saw it. And I watched it from beginning to end and um, it was beautiful to look at and I felt nothing for it. I, f I just felt nothing. It was so busy trying to please so, I, um, but I do love the Star Wars universe. I love it. I've liked certain episodes of The Mandalorian, but it's it's kind of lost its mystery for me as well. The first episode of The Mandalorian was amazing, and actually, last night's episode, the one with Bill Burr, um, I think it's Chapter Fifteen, was 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 pretty good. I ch I keep up with it because I want it to be as good as the pilot. It never is, but um, but now and again, it'll there'll there'll be a moment in it where there'll be a scene. It's just yeah. Not the greatest acting in that. Um, although Bill Burr was fantastic. Marcella, um, what would be your designated weapon in a zombie apocalypse? Mm. Probably an audio book of Joseph Morgan's life, like, you know, an autobiography that, that, he, that he's made, that he's like a book on tape, put them all to sleep. Um, Yarin Yaziki. Um, Yarin asks, Hey Daniel, I'm your. Maybe it's Yarin. Actually, I'm going to go with Yarin. Hey Daniel, I'm Yarin. Which TV series are you watching lately? Well, I am keeping up with The Mandalorian, even though, again, it's sort of in vain. Um, but what else am I watching? I love Fargo, but um, this late this latest season was not nearly as good as the first three. In fact, the first two seasons that were, were terrific. What else am I watching? Um, oh, I loved um, The Undoing. I watched The Undoing. I thought that was really fantastic. I watched that with my girlfriend. Um, I cannot say this name. Kindyakova, Lisa, Lisa Kindyakova. Hi, Daniel, my name's Lisa. I live in Russia, clearly. Um, I want to ask you, have you ever read fan fiction? No, I never have. Lisa, I haven't. The only fan fiction I've ever read was um, when I was making Fifty Shades of Gillies, I decided to read a little bit of Fifty Shades of Grey. And it was every bit as atrocious as I thought it would be. And I know that, that it's derived or it came from uh, this fan fiction. It was original fan fiction. So that's the only fan fiction I can really say I've read. And it was... Um, some of the most ghastly writing I've ever seen in my life. I don't think I'll ever, I mean, I might read worse, but, um, Sarah Mora. Hey, Daniel, I was wondering if you could have, would have done a crossover with Supernatural, you know, Sarah Mora. I, um, I, I don't know. Um, I've never seen the show. I've met those men, those gentlemen, and they are lovely men. Um, uh, Jensen and, I can't remember the other, the other gentleman's name. J Jensen and um, Jared, J Jared and Jensen. Um, am I saying that right? Sorry. Yeah, anyway. Um, they are sweet men. And I also met Misha briefly, and he's also a lovely man. Um, very briefly at a Comic-Con. Um, so I don't know if we could have done a crossover. I'd, I'd, I'd ne never seen the show. Um, Suhani got another question. Interesting. So there's some favoritism here. Jared. Jared and... Jansen? Jansen? Okay, whatever. Uh, Daniel, what did you guys drink as substitute for blood in the originals? Wine. It, 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 was, it was usually red. I insisted on a burgundy or, or a port. Um, 
I don't remember a day when I wasn't, um, you know, doing those things where I wasn't inebriated or entirely. That I'm joking. And I, I don't know. It was some sort of uh, sugar syrup thing. I think it, it, it had a it tasted kind of like maple syrup, I think. I think it had a maple in it, actually, um, and red food coloring. And Yeah. Anyway, did I run out of questions? I might run out of Oh, here we go. Oh, no, there's so many. Uh, Sophie, Sophie, it says, are you still in contact with anyone from TVD or TO and who? Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm in touch with all of them, um, really. Uh, I talk to Leah Pipes probably the most frequently and um, who I worship. And I also keep in touch with Charles Michael Davis. I love Phoebe. Um, I keep in touch with Joseph. Um, I haven't spoken to Yusuf Gatewood, who I would love to see, though. I kind of would love to reach out and see what, what he's up to. I miss all of these guys. I think they're all um, amazing. Um, trying to think of who else. Uh, and, and TBD, um, yeah, I, I was more in touch with Paul... Um, this, this year it's been a little quiet, but I, I still sort of stay in touch with Paul. And it's, it's conventions that kind of keep us in touch, you know, and unfortunately because those are gone, it's kind of killed our connection a little bit. Uh, Amanda, what do you miss most from the originals? Mm, my friendships, yeah, my, my, the, the laughter we had on the set. That's what I miss the most. Natasha Romanoff, what new skills have you learned in quarantine? Well, not new skills, Natasha. I just mostly, um, uh, it's the workout. It's really, it's really, just, um, working out every day, really. And, uh, and writing every day, making sure that those two things are taken care of. I, I think I built, I think I've, I've mastered my autonomy at 44 a little better than I used to. Um, yeah, I think I've, I think I think I've established better habits for living um, during quarantine. I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but I think I know how to I know what to do with my own time a little better and how to manage my time even with the kids. Um, this is from Heba one fifty two. I'm hey Daniel, I'm Heba. Here's my question: What country would you like to visit the most? Your dream destination? Lots of love from Morocco. Well, actually, and I'm not just saying this. I've thought about Marrakesh a lot. I would love, love, love to go to Morocco. Um, I'd also love to go, um, oh my God. I don't know, a beach someplace right now is a bit of a dream destination, anywhere in the Caribbean. I just, I, I wanna be in warm blue waters. That sounds, that sounds like the best. But in terms of countries I'd like to visit the most, yeah, Morocco is definitely up there. I, I'd like to go to Sweden. I've never been to Sweden. Um, I would like to, uh, I'd like to travel uh, across Africa a little more. Um, well, I mean, you are at your Northern Africa. So, but um, I'd like to go to Croatia, perhaps with them, um, perhaps with Nathaniel Bozolic, who I forgot to mention before, by the way, I'm still in touch with Nathaniel. He's great. He's amazing. Um, and also Daniel Sharman, who, you know, I keep in touch with once in a while. Uh, who is a fabulous human and a wonderful, wonderful actor. Um, Emily S., who's your favorite singer? That's a great question. Do you know my favorite singer is probably, is a guy from the 90s. Um, he had this really soulful, beautiful sound. Um, he's, he's, I don't think he produces stuff much anymore. Um, his name is Terence Trent Darby. I think he was... Um, you know, it's a very spiritual sound. I think he came from, you know, his, uh, he's, a, he's a British gentleman. Look him up, Terence Trent Darby. I loved his voice almost more than I loved anyone's sound. Um, if you needed, if you needed Jay Z, I can help you with that. If you needed Jay Z, all right, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Thank you, Emily. Um, Jordan Amanda, 911. Would you ever think about doing an autobiography? 
No, not 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 at this moment. That seems like something to do in the in, in the twilight of your career, um, and that that's I'm far from that. But thank you for asking the question, Jordan. I always think it's a little pretentious when people do autobiographies when they're like thirty or thirty five. There's something strange about. I I think any anywhere beneath forty five is is a little strange. Um, because there's so much life yet to live, particularly as an artist, you can be an artist your entire life. I understand it if you're doing an autobiography and you're an athlete. Totally, totally get that. Like, you know, if you, you know, accomplished amazing things and you're 33 years old and your body simply can't do what it used to do, and you know, and your 20s was really where you shone as an athlete, that makes total sense to me. But if you have a career where you can do it most of your life, why would you do that before? Um, unless you've got an incredible story to tell. Boys and Forever Love says, Hi, Daniel, my name is Dominique. And I was wondering why you wanted to start your acting career. You know, honestly, Dominique, I, um, just because I'm, I'm pretty lazy and I just wasn't very good at anything. I wasn't, I was good at some other things, but not, you know, and I think that acting was the thing that I thought, well, I can do this fairly well. Like, and I was very lucky in that when I was a kid, when I was very young, like five and six, no, uh, six, I started um, doing theater productions because I started so young. I just think I got it into, it got into my head then that I was, that I could have an acting career. Um, I never, I, I don't remember. There was no epiphany moment. Um, I just, I, I'm lazy, and I, and I thought, what can I do that isn't work, but is kind of work? Um, George Mavro. Hi, Daniel. Have you tried the Brothers, the Brothers Bond bourbon? No. No, I'm not really a bourbon guy. Um, I'm happy for those, those two gentlemen, Brothers Bond. Um, have you tried it, George? I don't know. Interesting. I'd, I'd be curious to know what it's what it's like. I'm a bourbon guy. I just don't like it. I like gin. I'm a bit of a gin guy. I like martinis. I like my martinis. And boy, in COVID, I've definitely been. Uh, I've definitely seen a lot more gin than I normally would. And what's interesting is, yeah, that I, I never used to drink at home. Now, you know, every other night I'll, I, I'll have like a drink or something at home. Um. Because who wouldn't in this political climate? Maggie Mills says, Daniel, would you ever take part in a horror movie? Maggie, you don't find, follow my career nearly closely enough. I've been in a couple of horrors. Um, yeah, I, I, I would. At, at this stage, that's right, I'm taking out my gum. Look, I'm even drinking the tonic that I have my gins with. I'm not drinking the gin. Um... Would, yeah, would I take part in a horror movie? It'd have to be, it would have to be uh, an exceptional new concept. Like, it would have to be something that I thought, oh, this is really bringing something to the genre, you know. Um, God, I can never remember the names of films. What was that one? There, 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 there have been a couple recently. Like, you know, if it was something like The Quiet Place, right, I mean, which isn't strictly a horror, it's more like a thriller, but The Quiet Place introduced this whole other element. I thought John's... Krasinski's direction in that was masterful. Like uh, the, the performances in that movie, the idea of that movie, it's just a beautiful, beautiful story. And it's saying so much about family. I love, love Krasinski's The Quiet Place. It's beautiful. So it, it'd have to be something um, revolutionary. Uh, Ceci says, hey, Daniel, do you paint? What do you paint? Like abstract art or portraits? I only draw um, portraiture and it's always... Always, always, Paul Wesley. They're not very good, but, you know, paint what you love. He's never wearing very much in any of them. In fact, I would say he's wearing nothing at all. Sue me. Last question. Ava Parke, who I remember from before, because that name was a real, real challenge to me. Love from India. Um, Daniel, I love you so much. Okay, thank you so much. How was being a father in quarantine for you? Well, of the children I know of, Apa, 
Um, I, it, it was particularly challenging. I got to tell you, when we started, um, when we started uh, the homeschooling, that was the most challenging stuff. And, you know, I'm newly separated. And so that, that, that's tricky too, because, you know, we have to, uh, we have to do, you know, share custody of the children and, and doing that. And, and so you're constantly sort of solo parenting and then getting these breaks. And it's, it's, it's tricky with the kids. Um, I say newly, it's been two years, but, but my, my, um, yeah, my experience with, with the kids, I just want them to feel as comfortable and as loved and as, uh, as nurtured as possible. And that's, that's a tall order for, uh, for a parent. You know, schools are vital, and you don't realize that uh, quite so much as when as you do when you're in quarantine and you you're kind of handcuffed to to to, to tasks now that you didn't have to do before. So I'll say that being a father in quarantine has been incredibly challenging. But I will say, there's I always have the thought that um, you know, as a as a let's say a 65 year old man, right? I, I would give everything I own. I'd give, I would give any, any money to be able to travel back in time and meet my five-year-old son and my seven-year-old daughter for even five minutes. Right. So keeping that in mind, I, I, I like, I'm like, look, this is, these, these are the moments as difficult as they are. This is a beautiful period and they are exquisitely cute. So anyway, Guys, it's been beautiful. A little lonely. I miss you because I miss making you laugh, and it's uh, I, it's harder to make the kind of dumb jokes that I'm inclined to make when I'm when I, I can't see you or feel your presence. But I love you all, and and I hope I get to see you in person uh, sometime soon. Yay, Pfizer and Moderna. Yay, 2021. Um, here's hoping I get to see you. Love, love my love to you all, and thank you so much for allowing me to do this. It was um. It's a beautiful experience. Thank you.